Oh no, not another NFED half-wave antenna. That's the subject of an email message I received from Mike when he offered to send me one of his antennas for review. We're gonna take a look at the Flatlanders NFED half-wave and see what makes it different from other NFEDs on the market. Now this isn't the first time I've seen this antenna. Mike Kitty 9 OBF has been selling his NFED half-wave antennas on the real platform for a couple of years now. I've known about this antenna since I ran into him last year at the Chicago FM Club's Ham Fest in Belvedere, Illinois. Mike also attended our Wisconsin Ham Radio campout last fall and demonstrated this antenna there. Well, since that time, the antenna has gone through a bit of refinement and I'm glad to be able to finally uh, put it on the air and do a review for you. So what makes this antenna different? Well, there's two key features, and maybe a third, depending on how you look at it. First, uh, the antenna comes fully assembled, and the wire is loaded onto this 3D printed reel for easy deployment and recovery. Second, the antenna uses a larger Fairrite 43 mix core in an auto transformer winding for better power handling and efficiency. Yes, you can do a full 100 watts phone and a full 100 watts digital with this antenna. Uh, and third, this antenna solves some of the frequency alignment issues common with NFED antennas. There's an, on the radiating wire, there is an additional capacitor and resistor combination added to the radiator at about 21 feet uh, from the winder uh, to help keep the frequency dips of, in line with the upper amateur radio bands. Now the Flatlanders NFED half-wave antenna is designed uh, for no tune operation on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands and, can, and can be used with the tuner on 30, 17, and 12 meters. The antenna comes fully assembled and is ready to go for out of the box deployment. Now Mike over at Flatlanders Mirrors did send me one of his NFED half-wave antennas in exchange for a video. Well, I do know Mike personally, we don't have a business relationship, so my comments and experience with this antenna are my own without any outside influence. The Flatlanders NFED half-wave antenna is a compact, ready-to-go antenna that operates on the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands without a tuner and is operable on 30, 17, and 12 meters with a full range tuner. This compact antenna is 3 and 3 8 inches in diameter, 2 and a half inches thick, and weighs about 12 ounces. The case assembly for this antenna is 3D printed out of sturdy ASA material, which is UV and heat resistant. This material is durable and rated for outdoor use. The antenna can be ordered in a variety of colors and with either an SO239 UHF female or a BNC connection on the side. On the other side is a lever that swings out to aid in winding the antenna. The key difference between this antenna and other NFED antennas is that it uses a larger Fairrite 264-323-1002 Type 4-3 mixed toroid. This toroid is wrapped with 18 gauge enameled wire in a 49 to 1 auto transformer configuration and is rated for a full 100 watts on phone, CW, and digital operation. The antenna radiator is 67 and a half feet of 26 gauge copper plated steel wire. At the end of the radiator is a carabiner clip and about 16 inches of wire is folded back onto itself. This allows the end user a bit of extra wire to fine tune the antenna. As you pull out the antenna wire, you will notice a bump at about 21 feet from the transformer. There is a capacitor in parallel with the resistor at this point and its purpose is to align the resonant frequency dips for the upper amateur radio bands. This makes the radiator electrically shorter on the higher bands, but does not affect the lower band resonance. The bump easily fits through the gap in the winder, but take care when winding and unwinding the wire when you reach this point of the antenna. So how does the antenna perform? Well, let's put it on the air and find out.
Perks on the Air, CQ, Perks on the Air, KB9, VBR, Kilo, Bravo, Niner, Victor, Bravo, Romeo, calling CQ for Perks on the Air. Kilo, Zulu, four, Charlie, Papa. Kilo, Zulu, four, Charlie, Papa, nice five, seven into Wisconsin, US, four, three, four, eight, back to you. Roger, roger, good day, Michael, I got you a five, five, Kilo, Yankee, thanks for letting me get you along again, I hope you have a wonderful activation, and may your log be full, 73. All right, yeah, it's going to be in the 80s today, so um, still, a, still a nice day nonetheless. So uh, thanks a lot for the contact. Roger, roger. 7-3, have a good one. KB9 VBR, parks on the air. Q is that? Park to park. The park to park station? Kilo, Foxtrot 5, Papa, Foxtrot Papa. This is John Park is US 4371 in North Texas. I have you a 5-6 into North Texas. Okay, Kilo, Foxtrot 5, Papa, Foxtrot Papa. Thanks for the 4371. Yeah, you're 56 here into US uh, 4348. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Michael. Love your videos. I've been trying to get you in the log for a long time. Um, you guys have a great day and a great activation. 73. All right. Hey, well, glad we're finally able to do it. Uh, you too. You have a great activation too. 73. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. November 5, Alpha Foxtrot. Kilo Alpha 5, Papa Mike Victor. Kilo Oscar 4, call Bravo Bravo. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, Kilo Alpha 5, Papa Mike Victor. You're a 57 in uh, Wisconsin, US 4348. Back to you. QSL, you're also 57 in Oklahoma at my park at US 8116. 8116. QSL. Roger the 8116 in Oklahoma, and thank you for the park today. 73, have a good one. Uh, was there a station ending Bravo Bravo? Yes, sir. Kilo Oscar 4, Golf Bravo Bravo. Kilo Oscar 4, Golf Bravo Bravo, 5-5 five, five into Wisconsin, US 4348. Back to you. Thank you very much, Michael. We got you about a 5-5 five, five here in Middle Georgia as well. And thank you for everything you do for us, man. All right. Hey, thanks for Middle Georgia. Uh, you have a great day and 73. 73. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. The Papa Yankee India Station again? Foxtrot 5, Papa Yankee India, thanks for the contact. 3333 three, three into Wisconsin, US 4348. Back to you. Seven three, you to have a great day. Ciao. Uh, KB nine VBR parks on the air. Uh, QRZ. Whiskey Tango zero Zulu. Whiskey Tango zero Zulu five one into Wisconsin. US four three four eight. Back to you. Uh, about a five three here into Colorado. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for Colorado today. You have a great day and seven three. Yeah, seven three. Hey, it's my pleasure. KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air. Kilo Z. Kilo one, Romeo, Delta, Papa. So what are my experiences with the Flatlanders NFED half-wave antenna? Well, as an NFED half-wave antenna, it really works as described. On the air, it exceeded every one of my expectations, which is great. From that standpoint, NFED half-wave antennas are pretty much all the same. Once you get them deployed and on the air, they're going to function all in the same manner. Uh, so when I talk about the subjective parts of my review, you know, I'm looking at things like the specs, the construction, fit and finish. With that said, I really do like the form factor of this antenna and the real aspect of it is well thought out and executed. It was easy to unwind and to wind up the radiating wire and the wire didn't kink or twist during that process. The antenna is super compact and I like how everything is enclosed within this real unit. Band conditions, well, they were pretty poor during my testing period, but despite the high amount of solar activity, the antenna performed quite well. For 20 meter phone operation, I was receiving excellent signal reports using just 50 watts of power. I was on the air for about 30 minutes and was able to get 48 contacts in the log. I switched over to digital and while FT8 was slow going due to band conditions and a very crowded uh, FT8 window on 20 meters, uh, the antenna handled things really well. 
Uh, the next morning, as I continued my test, the bands did improve, and I was able to get another 50 digital contacts in my log on 40 and 20 meters, FT8, you know, split between those two bands uh, during my, my about two hours uh, on-air session. Out of the box, uh, the SWR of this unit was a little bit higher than what I was uh, expecting, especially on the 40 meter band. Uh, but that can mostly be accounted for by the location and deployment. And I would try this in a couple of different spots before I made any final judgment on that or did any changes to the antenna itself. On 40 meters, the antenna was about 1.8 to 1 in the foam portion of the band and about uh, 1.5 four to one at the bottom of the band. Uh, now you do get a short amount of wire here uh, at the end of the antenna so that you can make uh, any fine tune adjustments or tweaks to it yourself uh, to get that sweet spot that you are looking for for your particular uh, style of operation. As for the downsides of the antenna, well, because the reel is all plastic, uh, the winding operation isn't quite the smoothest, but it is good enough and the reel functions very well. I imagine as the 3D material wears a bit, the action will smooth up. You know, I think the biggest concern would be as you unwind it and wind it to take care when you reach that point in the, in the wire where the inline capacitor is uh, it does you got to be careful you don't snag it on the on the real mechanism but once you get that past that point uh, you, I don't have any concerns with uh, with the wire now the wire itself is 28 26 gauge stealth wire so it's going to be pretty thin and we'll see with continued use on how that holds up uh, in the field maybe what I'll do is a torture test come this winter to see how it works in a in a very cold environment now I know what people are going to ask, uh, which is better, the real portable antenna or this one? Both are similar in that they use a real mechanism for radiator storage, but I think the key difference is how they go about operation. With the real portable antenna, uh, you can wind it up slightly to fine tune the resonant frequency in the amateur bands. Uh, with this antenna, you don't have that facility, but it uses a capacitor located on the radiating wire to compensate for resonant frequency drift. It's just two different approaches to resolving a similar issue. Which is better? I don't know. Final words. This is a fully constructed NFIT half-wave antenna built onto a real platform for convenient deployment and recovery. It has a bigger transformer than other NFIT half-wave antennas on the market for greater efficiency and power handling, and it comes at a really good price point. For what you get, I think this antenna is a great deal. Well, thank you to Mike over at Flatlanders Mirrors for supplying the NFED half-wave antenna system for this review. And the antenna is available direct from his Etsy page. Links are in the video description down below. Well, do you have any questions about the Flatlanders uh, NFED half-wave antenna? I'll leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching. You have a great day in 73.